Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. Um, in this tutorial we are going to continue making our knife and the sheath basically to, to get them uh, uh, textured. If you haven't followed my previous videos, uh, they're all about getting simple objects such as this knife, um, you know, modeled and then sculpted a bit in ZBrush and then putting into substance painted for, for texturing. Uh, the tutorials are aimed for beginners, they're not very advanced, they're quite straightforward, you know, getting straight to the point and really teaching you how to do some things that may seem very daunting at first. So yeah, um, you know, if you, if you really, if you enjoy the video, please let me know, please leave a, li a like, a comment, subscribe subscribe to the, to the channel if you want to because I will be posting future videos like this um, so yeah let's uh, let's begin so right basically we've got in our own substance painter we've already baked the maps um, you know that we needed for the knife and in order to do this uh, what, what you need to do is as you go into substance painter first click file then new and to the new project tab you'll have to select the mesh you want to, um, you know, bring in. So that will be our my knife low, which contains a sheet as well. This is being ex uh, has been exported out of 3ds Max, uh, as we saw in the previous videos. So you oh, double click knife low. I won't be doing that as I've done it already. So once you double click it, you can set your resolution to whatever resolution size you want. I would go with 4K. And then, you know, the normal map format, I normally go with OpenGL because I like to use my textures into Blender, so that makes things a little a bit easier. Um, so yeah, you can select whatever you want from here. And then the template, the PB, you know, I go for PBR Metal Roughness Alpha Blend, but you can go for, you know, other PBRs if you want to. And then once you do that, you press OK, and it should open the low uh, poly file. Uh, once that's done, uh, just go up here to edit and click the bake mesh maps uh, Make sure you select the, ma the maps that you want. So in this instance you'd want the normal uh, World space normal ambient occlusion curvature, maybe the position, you know, make sure it's 4k again Over here, uh, you know, you wouldn't have anything in this field. So you would have to add something So that's the button over there to add a file so over here you select the knife high and as you can see it's been loaded over here and then further down uh, we've got the uh, max frontal distance and rear distance now you only need to play with these settings in, in case the baking of your file doesn't quite match the high poly so it's about tweaking this until you get the right result in my case I don't need to do anything because the low poly and the high poly are so you know, uh, well um, constricted to each other, and if you follow my open subdiv workflow, then you won't have you won't have any issues. Uh, so you can keep that those settings like that. Uh, leave these three here, these uh, three boxes ticked, and then we've got anti aliasing. Uh, anti -ali anti aliasing. You can go with uh, you know two by two, four by four. I wouldn't go eight by eight unless you have a very beefy computer and you've got all the time in the world to bake this. But I normally go with 2x2 two two, and on you know higher end projects I go with 4x4. Four four. And then make sure on the match, make sure you always select uh, match by mesh name. And if you, again, if you follow my process, then the match by mesh name should quite, uh, come quite in handy for you. Uh, basically what it means is every part of the mesh that's a low poly will also match the high poly, you know, by name. And, and you know, they'll have these suffixes uh, underscore high and underscore low. Again, if you follow the, if you follow this uh, process, then you shouldn't have any issues over here. Once that's all done, you selected the maps you want to uh, bake, just press bake all textures. That will take a, a while, you know, a few minutes, depending on your machine. But once it's done, you should be able to basically see this result. And as you can see, we don't really have any uh, baking errors or anything of the sorts. It's actually quite nice, so it's a nice bake. Um, so we can now start already laying some textures on this. Now, as you can see up here, we've got um, two texture sets. So we've got knife and sheath. So if I press this eye, it will deactivate both of them. So that's my knife and that's my sheath, right? So in our, um, you know, the first thing we'll do is we'll start texturing the knife. So the first thing we want to do um, is let, let's just get rid of this layer up here. We don't need it. 
Um, so we've got our knife selected, that's why we want to start editing. Now, if we add any sort of textures over on top, it will basically texture both the knife and the handle. It's just how it basically works with these layers. So let's just go to our uh, materials over here. And we need to find a material that would perfectly fit our knife. Now, what I would like to do is you, know, you can go with a steel, um, a steel texture or maybe aluminium. Let's just try the aluminium. I'm just going to drag this and drop it. Oh, I've, I've deleted the layer on the sheath um, the file, but I haven't deleted it on the aluminium. Right, so I've just added the aluminium pure and you can already see it over here, right? That's the aluminium pure. It's not exactly the best texture for our case, but well, you know, we'll see how we can make it a bit rougher and, and so on. But now we've got the same texture on top of this handle as well, and that's not something that we want. So what we'll do is, with the aluminium pure selected, we'll right click it, and then select add black mask. Once that's been selected, uh, you, you, you know, you've now got a black mask over here, so we will go over on the left side, and we've got this polygon and fill button. Once you press that, You've got a few options up here of which one of them will be uh, mesh fill so select that and then press the uh, knife blade basically and now the texture the aluminium pure is only showing on this blade but it doesn't show up on the handle so that's cool right uh, we'll just go back to our brush so we don't have that uh, selected I mean, if I paint now as you can see I'm basically adding the aluminium pure on the handle as well so I'm just going to control Z that if you paint. So just just uh, bear in mind that if you press, so you look here at the grayscale, if you press X, it will invert it to black. So if I paint over here, I'm removing the aluminium pure. If I press X again, it's so that's white. I'm now painting the aluminium pure. So that's very, that's very, you know, important thing to, to remember. So, uh, you know, I change, I can change the light in the environment by holding shift and then right clicking and dragging. So as you can see right now, I'm rotating the environment light. So you can see the mesh from different angles. Right, so now we want to add uh, some textures to the handle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for, you know, something uh, wood like, but again, I don't really have anything that would fit this particular case. So let's just have a look in the smart materials. Uh, Substance Painter already comes out of the box with quite a few materials that you can use straight away, or you can start making your own. It's not really uh, a problem. So I've just typed in wood. Um, so let's just have a look. Maybe we can use. Maybe we can use this Nordic. Let's just drop that in. So now the wood materials being loaded because it's under aluminium pure it means the aluminium will show on top of it but because the aluminium is not showing on the handle at all then the uh, this texture will come through but so does the normal map over here as you can see now one thing that we can do to resolve this very quickly is again we can add a black mask and then go to this button again and just mesh fill the handle um, and that's it basically now the normal map of the texture doesn't uh, show through the knife blade but this texture per se doesn't really fit our um, you know our material really so I'm just gonna press delete as it's not something that we were looking for we need something else and actually one substitute for, for wood can be a leather um, so what we can do, we can have a look at this leather fine edge aged, so we can add that in. Uh, now these textures do take a bit to load. If you want to decrease the loading times, you can switch to 2K, which then will make uh, will speed things up. So this is our new texture. What I want to do now is again add myself a black mask, and then mesh fill on this handle only, which is now is fine. Uh, I'm just going to go into paint mode. So I do like this a bit more, but it does make the knife, you know, handle look quite uh, leathery, which we, we sort of knew that was going to happen. Um, so this is a smart material, which it means it has multiple options to go through. So you press this folder over here, you can see the options that you've got. You know, you can, you can uh, remove this dust if you want to, but I wouldn't because it actually makes it quite nice. Can take these uh, edge damages out, which you can't. You know, you can you can t you can see what happens. But again, I like those. 
you can take the leather pattern out, which, you know, brings our mesh closer to looking wood-like. And then we've got this color, basically, which we can click, but, uh, uh, you know, you, you can actually now start playing with this color over here to make it look differently, you know, closer to timber, for example. So I do have my reference over here, uh, the one that I used to make the knife, and you can see what sort of texture it has. Uh, it's it's not bad. We can we can definitely do something like that. We can basically combine two of these textures together to create an effect like you see in this reference here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the leather pattern out because we don't we, honestly we don't need it. Um, it just won't really add anything any value to us. Um, so I'm just gonna delete that all you know entirely. And now I'm going to right click this texture, press you know copy, and then up here actually just you know control V and basically that will paste it I'm going to bring this underneath aluminium pure and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this color to you know darker black or, or, or sorry darker black a, a blackish color basically um, something like that and then I'm also um, oh sorry I messed it up I should have made sure that I've got you know this folder selected as a whole so let me just copy layers that should be fine and now control V okay now it's okay now we've got the you know now we've got the textures okay we're gonna go down here to leather and we're gonna put it as a blackish texture something like that and now on this mask over here we want to add a generator uh, and with the generator selected we can now start adding some more you know some more variations so for example we could do something like this you know and and, and that would that basically adds that um, um, uh, th this texture that we have on uh, uh, the top adds it over the one uh, uh, below but we can definitely play with, uh, with it a bit more so let's just try and do that now so with the generator selected we'll just change it to dirt for example and now that we've got dirt selected we want to you know start seeing the effects of it but before we do that let's just go down here to our color and so this is our base color which i want to you know make it a bit brighter maybe yeah somewhere around there something like that that should work for us and now we can go back to our dirt layer and we can increase the dirt level uh, just uh, just so slightly so, so we can start seeing some effects yeah that looks okay let's just increase the dirt level a bit more now that's more like it you know now we've got a bit more of a pattern over here going on which i like and but now we've got this over our, on our uh, blade as well so we need to right click the generator and add a paint uh, option on top and then with the paint option on let's just go back to our mesh you know to our polygon fill with the mesh selected we'll click the blade and that will basically clear it from the blade just make sure you're on black over here and not white because if you're on white obviously paints it in rather than removes it right now let's just go back to our brush and this is our handle that we've done now you can add some more details if you want for example we've got this point over here that you may want to play a bit with you know just in the in the reference of the knife if you remember from a previous video we had like a sort of a red dot in there um, we do have some um, you know if you, if you look over here we have increased some, sort of the details in the in the handle with some extra dust we can remove that if you want so make it a bit more cleaner if that's okay if that's what you want or you can leave it and you can have the edge damages taken out which I would because I think it's just gonna be way too much edge damage um, and in and down here for example the edge damage is definitely causing a bit more um, you know even more havoc so maybe you want to tone that down again you can add a paint uh, a paint um, layer on top of this so I've just added the paint and now you can see I'm basically I can add or I can remove uh, edge damage well you can see how I can just simply come in here with a brush and just add 
more and more edge damage if I really want to. But doesn't mean that I want to. <laughs> right? I think I think the edge damage could be useful in certain areas where, for example, you know that the surface should be a lot more rough just because the grip is there, so the the hand touches it a bit more, so you can do something like that. You know? Uh, just make sure that you can only if you want to really start painting. So for example, I we're gonna do over here on this uh, circle um, We're just going to add uh, Another we can add another, uh, you know uh, material on top So for example, we can write in here, you know, not just leather we can write something like plastic um, And then we just can have a look over here. Let's just do this plastic dusty add that on top uh, now this loads in and obviously we'll cover the whole mesh, but we don't uh, we obviously don't want that uh, Let's just give it a minute for it to load. Mm, it does take a bit, right? So now I've got the plastic dusty on top uh, I'm just going to add a black mask with the black mask selected. I can basically paint it in if I want to But what I'm gonna do actually I'm gonna go to um, alphas over here and then I want to find an alpha that would, uh, you know, something that would look nice. Um, we can definitely, you know, you can pick whatever alpha you want. You know, for example, right now, that's the alpha that I've got. Uh, so, you know, I can do that <laughs> if I wanted to. But I think we need um, something more of a uh, circle to go in there. So, um, you know, we can do a brush as well if we want to, but I'm just going to do a circle. As you can see, the circle is obviously, it's got a circle in the circle, so not exactly um, what we need, but we can still work this out, you know, something like that, and then we can just paint it straight in. Uh, but the problem is, oh, sorry, the um, our mesh is equal, so I'm just going to press F1 on the keyboard so you can see this, our mesh is duplicate. The texture, or the texture is uh, duplicated over here. So whatever I do on this side happens on the other side as well. If that wasn't the case, then you would need to activate symmetry in order to paint on both sides. Um, and symmetry can be activated from up here. You press that button, and you've got these options. So you can, you know, select how you want to paint basically. Right. So now we added our plastic. Uh, which that's you know, it's great um, But we do need to change the color to something more uh, authentic, so I'm just gonna go over to the base and Just go to you know a different kind of color. Maybe You know, let's try something like that Yeah, it should be fine. Okay, but we do want to mute the color a bit more because otherwise it will just look way too unrealistic so you know Try and mute the color a little bit. Again, it's your can be your choice, whatever you want to do. But I would definitely do something like that. Let's just press F two on the keyboard to go back into full screen mode. So that's our handle done, basically. If you want to make any other changes, feel free to do that. Now on the uh, knife uh, blade itself, I'm not really happy with the blade. I do want to give it a better a better material to work with. So let's just have a look at what materials we have available or if we need to make one ourselves. So now I'm going to select the aluminium pure and I'm going to press the delete button, which will then uh, render our knife blade without any material on top. So now let's just go to small materials and let's just write in steel and see what we've got. Now, again, I would really experiment with some of these things. You, you may never know. Um, what you're actually going to like but for example a stained steel should probably do the case if you put the stained steel exactly where the aluminium pure was you should pretty much get the same sort of result uh, theoretically speaking um, it seems I'm not really getting that result so I'm just going because the you know maybe it's the plastic dusty that's going in the way let's just try it no it's not so the steel stained isn't really showing through here, which is quite interesting. Uh, I wonder if we have the same problem with other materials as well. So let's just wait for that to load. And yeah, it seems to have the same problem. Um, now this can happen for, a, you know, could be a number of reasons for it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a black mask on top. 
can go over here and select this polygon now basically you know I made sure that now that shows up in there but it's still not doing it so in order for us to find out what's causing this uh, first of all understand that our uh, you know you can start deactivating some of these layers to see but actually the problem doesn't come from that the problem comes from where I laid the layer in so my layer my steel stained rather than being outside of the plastic dusty it's actually inside of it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it out which I just did now you see it's very important when you when you uh, you know press it so this is now showing up correctly again I've got a black mask to also make sure it only shows up on the on the handle here sorry on the blade so now you know we've got it all set up in here but it does look quite a bit too rough so again we want to go in here and see what we can take out so for example do we want to take out this dirt uh, which is probably you know adding a bit more uh, the dirt seems to be fine so I wouldn't take that off but is it the steel base which is causing all the issues and it's not uh, so what exactly is um, you know causing the issue of, of this um, the steel looking so dirty generally the response lays in the steel base so the steel base is using this steel 003 it's got these basic parameters and so on so you can you know go through here and start taking some of these parts out to see what will make your material look a bit better so you can take the normal out for example you can even take the color out if you want um, so in this case we want to sort of get these um, you know yeah let's take that now the dirt adds a bit of flavor to it the blade just looks way too way too rough um, so again you know we can go in here and, and, and have a look at the steel that we're using so we've got the you know we can we can press a different kind of steel which then changes the texture so you can see now see now that's changed to something else uh, you can take the roughness down on this on the steel that we just added which then makes it a bit more shiny well this has obviously now become an incredible amount of shine so we don't need that either you know so now our knife looks a bit uh, a bit different uh, we've got a normal intensity that we could tame, that we could tone down um, so again that makes it you know something like that now it just looks like a very dirty knife but it's actually looking a lot better than you know to, uh, to our original idea what we wanted to do right okay so this is our knife it's a very sharp knife a very you know um, maybe it's shining a bit too much so let's just increase that roughness so yeah I hope you guys uh, like the knife now let's just move on to the sheath so for the sheath can be it can be a very straightforward process because we do have quite a bit of uh, leather already into our uh, repertoire here of tools now we can take over the reference to have a look it's a brown you know a dark brown sort of color now we can make it the same color as what the knife handle is but maybe we want to do something else so I'm just gonna have a look here what we've got um, for example I like this um, oh, sorry let me just click the sheath so I like this leatherette damaged. Now some of these um, textures you can get off the substance, um, substance, substance share. So just go in there and download, um, you know, community created texture uh, textures. So this is our uh, texture. Uh, it seems that the substance painter wants to now uh, save. I'm just going to skip this. So now we've got the um, the texture on. Um, as you can see, it's really kind of taking over some of these um, effects that we had over here. You can see this, you know, this um, sort of mosaic um, pattern. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I can take the leather pattern out, just like that, or I can leave it in. It's got a blur effect on. So if we deactivate the blur effect, you can see what happens. It becomes quite sharp. I think the blur effect helps, but the pattern is still very, very, um, how should I say, strong. So in some cases we can, you know, we can press invert to make it come out, but we don't want to do that. Uh, we've got the texture that it's using, it's using cells. 
so actually you know um, sorry about that um, the cells that we're using currently is just way too strong if we take it out this is basically what happens right you're being left with nothing to work in there um, so we can deactivate the leather pattern out if we want to create a different one we're just gonna have to uh, you know with different parameters but I think leaving it like this this is this is fine this one here so yeah I really I do like this uh, one thing that we could do is well actually first thing make sure that we are we have symmetry active as you can see over here it won't really you know we don't have this side share with this side in the uv space so we're gonna have to have symmetry active um, so let's just have our leather selected uh, we want to make this like a burning sort of um, effect so actually i'm just gonna drag this leather on top I just like to play with these smart materials really they're very strong uh, you know very powerful very powerful tools and I like to use them whenever I can um, so what, I'm, what I want to do now is I want to paint with that leather fine aged into uh, basically into here oh sorry I just had Cortana activating for some reason so you know this is not this is not bad actually when you when you look at the combination here this is not really a bad combination. I like it, um, but alas, we're not we're not going to use it for that. We're just going to add a black mask, and now with the black mask selected, we'll go into paint. So basically, I can now paint that texture in, but that texture does have something that's uh, not specifically helpful to me, uh, which is the leather pattern. I want to take out. Um, we can leave the dusty edges and now we'll go to the leather color which I want to set to a dark uh, dark black so now I'm just gonna go into you know up here again to the black mask and I'm gonna start painting with it see how that looks uh, I'm just gonna use my pen on this but again let's not forget to activate symmetry so let's just see if that works i've just painted on this side has it painted on the other side no it has not so i'm just going to go to settings uh we need to sort of see how we're, how we're going to mirror this basically so see that that red line over there sort of indicates where the symmetry is going to be so you can see it Unfortunately, I don't know if I'm gonna get it correctly because I did move this mesh from position in order to get into a more, you know, theatrical sort of not not theatrical but more like a style uh, a a a different position, you know, so it looks a bit nicer. But you know what? Actually, I'm not really bothered. It's not a lot to paint in here, so you know, using my pen, I can come over in here and just start dragging some of these lines. You know, just increase that brush size a little bit. Uh, our alpha, by the way, is the circle that we had earlier, so it's not really it's not really the best alpha to use. So I'm just going to go into brushes, and I'm going to select a hard, basic hard brush, which is fine. Uh, and now with my basic hard brush, I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to add that de you know the, the details in in these crevices over in here, just to give them a bit more depth. Now one of the things that we can do as we paint this we can go into our leather color over here have you know height is activated and then we can play with the height range to make this either come out or go down you know the um, whatever texture we're adding in there so for example let me just play with this a little bit hmm no I think it's the fill yeah it's the fill that's not allowing me so okay okay now we're now we're uh talking so i'm just adding as you can see we're just adding this sort of um this sort of effect in here um now going to go to my black mask again uh, press x on the keyboard because i want to remove some of the the changes that we've made and i just want to start it again so press x again on the keyboard and now we can just add this in as you can see i'm adding a bit of depth as i go along 
so you know now we'll just need to decrease that brush size so yeah something like that uh, okay yeah something like that now over here as you can see there's a uh, there's quite a bit of you know smaller streaks so again if you want to do if you want to add them in it's fine just going to play a bit with this something like that and now we're just going to continue on this side uh, you can then change the colors if you want once you lay down the pattern you can then play with the colors now some of the things that you may want is you may want to change brushes to something something that's going to be more artistic and more it's going to look more natural so for example let's just try with a basic soft so the basic soft pretty much does whatever the heart was doing so it's not really gonna work very well i'm just using a dirty splash and i think this is gonna work out better as you can see it's just creating a bit more variation in the height which is basically what we want so again i'm just gonna do that going to do this like that and yeah that's that's a lot more that's a lot nicer isn't it than what it was with the um, basic with a with a hard brush so I'm just going to continue on doing this and then we're going to resume on looking at these stitches and then we'll look at these buttons over here and that really should be it um, in terms of finishing the, the sheath and maybe we'll add a bit of a pattern over here on the um, uh, over here on the, on the sheath but again it's really not necessary if we don't like it if we don't want it um, so yeah I'll see you after I finish adding these details over here so now I've got the, um, the details added over here on the um, uh, well basically on these forms uh, you know a lot of rough damage burn damage or whatever you want to call it um, you know making this sheet looking like it's been through for quite a while quite a lot so now I've got this sort of um, you know damage over here on the leather which I don't really like because um, it, it's basically you know just, just doesn't look very natural to me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the leather damage um, and I'm going to go to the actual damages themselves you know I can deactivate them if I wanted to or I can go into its uh, base color and you know I can I can I can take the height uh, even lower just to basically help with that but um, you know I've got this gradient that I can play with over here I can change the color I would like to go for a more darker sort of a bit of a darker tone um, you know we've got color two as well if we wanted to use it so you know you can basically add a bit more variation to that if you if you really and if you really want it but it's not you know I don't really need it going color offset that you can work with you can mask them you can you know combine them basically uh, what I do want to do is I want to make sure that this damage is not showing up everywhere like on this bold and, and whatnot. I can resolve that by just simply adding a mesh on, uh, you know, a texture on top, so that should be fine. Now, I do want these stitches to stand out quite a, you know, a bit more, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have to paint them in. So we'll go to our small materials let's just see what we've got in terms of uh, fabric so we do have some fabrics over here uh, we can have a look at um, you know some of these maybe maybe this doll dobby aged so I'm just gonna bring that fabric on top uh, it doesn't really matter that I put it on top of everything uh, because I am going to paint it in wherever I want it uh, I just want to test it out a little bit in terms of um, how it's going to look and how it's going to react. So this is the fabric, uh, again, obviously way too strong at the minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it and add a black mask. Um, with the black mask added, I do want to paint it in. So for example, you know, just paint it in over there. Um, something like that and the reason why I did that was because now I want to play with its um, height 
So with the, you know, just let's see if, we, if there's some filters that we want to take out. So we want to leave the sharpen. We can leave the dirt. The fibers are okay. Fabric pattern, if you want to leave that. Um, we can leave it. But I do want to have a look at the pattern itself. It seems to be um, a bit too, um, you know, there's not enough gaps in it. So we can play with some of with some of these gaps over here, something like that. And then we also we've got the base color ba uh, over here, which I want to make a make it a bit more dark. So maybe something like that. Yeah, that should be fine. Now this warp. Not really sure what this does, um, but I do want to play with the height of it. So I'm just gonna make it, make sure it stands out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nothing else is gonna happen at this point, but something like that, basically. Uh, one other thing that we could do, we could also play with the fabric pattern as to what degrees it goes in. So you can have a look. Um, I think. You know, having it something like that should be a lot better. Now, again, we're talking about very small details that probably aren't even that visible. So, with with that done, we can basically come in here and actually, I'm gonna use. I'm not gonna use a. I'm gonna go in, into the brush. I'm gonna use a proper hard brush. Uh, let me just uh, delete what I've added over in here. I'm pressing X on the keyboard, and you can take it out off. Now I'm just gonna make my brush be the size of what I want it to be, and basically I can start laying that in now. So maybe something like that. And again, something like this. Yeah. So let's just have a look. Does it look okay? I think it's not too bad or whatever stitches we want to create. I mean, you could, but uh, theoretically speaking, you can go in here and, and just have a basic soft brush like that, make it a lot smaller, make sure that the opacity is quite low, and basically go press X on the keyboard and then just, you know, try and try and take some of this, um, you know, some of, some of this out a little bit, which then makes it obviously look a lot more uh, as if it's as if it's going in. And um, you know it, it, it's got it's got it's it's, t it's taller in the middle, but obviously not so tall at the at the extremities at the at the ends. So again, that would mean to take you know it would take quite a bit of time to do that. So uh, I think we just need to do a better job next time in a normal map in order to get a better result. But you get the idea. I'm just going to start putting these in, and then we'll move on to the next step. Which is basically just to finish off these uh, buttons here on the on the strap, uh, and that should be it really. So now we've got now we've got our um, basically our stitches done as well on both sides. Uh, let's add the uh, buttons that we need over here. I'm just going to use another steel on this steel material. So you know the steel that I'm going to use is going to be looking quite a bit beaten up so I'm just gonna drag it on top over there so we'll try this steel rust again this will obviously up, up, um, go over on the entire mesh so we're just gonna have to mask it and make sure it only applies to these buttons over here uh, I'm just going to add a black mask and then with the black mask selected go over here in polygon fill and just press um, sorry with the X uh, with the with it being in black, I'm just going to press this uh, mesh over here, which for some reason didn't seem to have an effect. Um, let me just go like that, and sorry, I was supposed to be being white, not in black. Um, these are all basically same thing. So now let's just press F2 and now we can see our button is over here showing correctly like that. Okay, so it's a very rough sheath and, and knife basically. Let's just bring the knife in as well so you can have a look. Uh, this is basically our model as it stands. Yeah, something like that. 
okay um, now what we want to do is we want to add a bit more variation to the sheet itself uh, it shouldn't take long it's all about you know just adding that extra sort of love to the to the actual foundation of this color uh, and in order for us to do this uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the leather fine aged from over here uh, I'm going to press you know I'm going to copy it basically so copy layer and I'm going to press Control V to paste it which then puts it on top of what we were we, we had uh, we'll just wait for the program to load and now the more textures you add to Substance Painter the heavier it becomes for the computer to tag along with it so you know at some point you will have to tone down your resolution from 4k to 2k just to, just just in order to get it you know to get through uh, so one of the things that we want to do straight away is we want to basically remove the um, I want to remove the back the mask um, so I'm just going to actually uh, toggle you know deactivate the toggle mask um, which then if I go over here um, uh, now I'm just going to delete paint the paint layer and then I'm also going to remove the mask entirely uh, I'm going to make sure well actually something is blocking my mask again as you can see right so let me just bring it up here on top of everything else uh, because I really want to see what's blocking my mask again um, it's not the fill it's not the dust either as that doesn't have anything to do with it so what exactly is stopping the mask from showing is it this over here I doubt it okay well you know what I'm just gonna remove it and just add a new one that should be just to make things a lot easier uh, we can probably use this leather yeah leather fine aged again let's just drop it in we'll wait for it to load so this is our new um, new mesh uh, sorry new texture I'm gonna go to the leather color and give it a bit of a black tint would really like to see this changing um, okay oh god honestly what have I done <laughs> I was I was editing the knife sorry about that guys honestly I didn't even realize what I was doing I didn't have my um, I didn't have yeah I should be fine now okay I didn't have my sheet selected this is why nothing was happening right so now that I've got the sheet selected I can now start editing you know the actual sheath rather than the knife itself and it is blocking a bit so okay I'm just gonna take the knife out I'm going to clear these off I'm going to drag in the leather fine and put it on top just like I said I would uh, open the folder go to color change it to uh, dark like that I'm gonna go over here add a black mask and on the black mask I'm going to add a generator um, and then on the generator we'll try a dirt modifier a dirt generator um, once that loads we can basically see the dirt generator in place let's just increase the levels yeah that looks very nice okay um, one other thing that we want to do is we want to make sure our dirt generator goes somewhere around um, here and the reason for that is that I don't want it to show over on my stitches and I don't want it to show over, over those buttons and that basically resolves the problem altogether okay so I think the sheath I think, they, I think it looks quite nice actually uh, let's just bring the knife in yeah it does seem to, com to you know uh, compensate it, it, itself quite nicely so I'm happy with the result I hope you guys are happy as well uh, if you 
you know, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something about how to paint and substance paint it, you know, things like of this nature, then please leave a like, subscribe, and and leave a comment below with your whatever requirement you have from me. You know, I'll make a tutorial if I can of whatever uh, thing you're struggling with. I will definitely help you out. So thank you guys for watching and have a good night and I'll see you in the next tutorial that I release.